Ladies and gentlemen, you have waited all week. Yeah, Boogie yeah. Page. 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 Throwing it down for things BMX is ready. ready. I know I am. Check the ATV Airways. Uh huh. Welcome to the All Things BMX show. It's episode 172. We got the flying banana this evening with Eddie Fiola. He's running a little bit late, caught up in that uh, West Coast traffic. He'll be in here as soon as possible. Just want to let you guys know, Eddie is an American professional freestyle BMXer. The accolades run deep. He is also a film stuntman, and he's a five-time AFA champion, along with a four-time Nora Cup number one rider. And uh, he's been in tons of movies, Chris. Yeah, I I don't even know. I, I guess we'll find out about that here in a little bit when he when he gets on here with us. But uh, you ever see the Dukes of Hazard? Yeah, the movie. Uh, the Johnny Knoxville. He was in that one. In that? Oh, really? I did not know that. He's in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Really? You can find it all on his IMDb. Where you can hang around yeah. a little bit. We can ask him about it. <laughs> but, uh, he'll be joining us here shortly on the Danger Snack video line, and uh, we want to say a big, give a big shout out to the Danger Snack committee out there on the West Coast. It's going to be announcing Mr. Brian Dorsey will be announcing this weekend at the um, oh, Frogtown Classic. That's right. that's right. So you guys, if you see him, say hi. Bug him for some of those Danger Snacks. They're the snack. That's the difference between dragon ass and hauling ass. Oh. Hey, do we still have a discount? Shit shows still the discount code for you at checkout for the danger snacks. Yeah, so check them out. Man, more and more people are finding out about the uh, taking them things and staging as you're going up the hill to get ready to race. <laughs> It's, a, you know, it's becoming I, a new thing. I got more and more people coming up to me and hitting us up at the races when they see the canopy asking for danger snacks. Yeah. So stop by. You see the All Things BMX show uh, we don't have canopy. left. We got to wait till we oh. re up. He's going to send another right. care pack our way after Frogtown. I was talking to him before the show. And okay. I know that our so. other friend, Mike Miller, is going to be announcing there too. So you guys, uh, yeah. after this weekend, man, let us know how everything went for you guys there. Love to hear some stories. You guys in the chat, let us know what you're looking forward to at Frogtown. You guys, don't forget, you can support the show by sending the stars. That's below if you guys are watching on a mobile device. Or you can head on over to our Buy Me a Coffee page and send support in directly. All that goes to equipment and fees that we pay each week to do the show. It's not actually coffee. It's not actually coffee at all. <laughs> we it could be. We might be. We might. We could maybe uh, use some coffee tonight. But yeah. <laughs> maybe. Definitely. 
Chris and I are coming to you from the Big Top Desk right here. It's sponsored by DeSoto BMX. If you guys haven't got there, make sure you put it on your bucket list. Find yourself there right now. That's right. Melissa is back at her producer's perch. Melissa, how's it going back there at the Gate 9 producer's perch? Doing great. You ready for a big night? Uh, Sure. I'm doing my best for stalling right now. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I've been back to work for a couple days, so I don't quite have my uh, sea legs. No. 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 All right. You'll get there. And how long were you off, Melissa? I don't even know. Three months, I guess it was. There you go. About three. (laughs) Can't call it a vacation, though. No. 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 Not when you're dealing with uh, surgery and rehab yeah. and all that stuff. I so. you could definitely get used to that stay-at-home mom thing. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You definitely could. Yeah, for sure. Never had that opportunity, but I think <laughs> I think I could make it work. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to rearrange your schedule a little that's bit. That's right. That's right. The show's chat is brought to you by our good friends at BMX Rocks Photography. They were very, very busy last weekend down in Louisville taking pictures. Yeah. I, I I don't know if they've announced the winner on how many pictures she took down there. No, she hasn't even loaded them yet. Hasn't even loaded them yet. But you no. know what she has going on? Roxanne has these uh, trading cards. They look you know kind of like baseball cards. Mm-hmm. Those are cool looking, man. Are they stickers or just the baseball cards? I, I don't. I thought I've they were the just cards, too. but then she said something about stickers as well. So I don't know if it's. Oh, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna give me a Chris Beer sticker and put it right on my number no. plate next to the Paul <laughs> you know. next to the Paul Remington uh, um, <laughs> pin that Richfield's gonna be doing here shortly. Oh, those are cool, actually. I, I, whenever yeah. that race is, I, I got to do my best to get one of them, man. Start kicking front tires out of your competitors. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of BMX Rocks Photography, our chat question this evening, why do you think BMX has eight lanes to start racing? Hmm. I know. I asked this, uh, what was it, earlier last week, I did think? Did you ever or Google an answer? I, I did not. I didn't. I and, doubt um, there's a Google answer for that. <laughs> why wasn't it seven? Why wasn't it six? Maybe, maybe ten. We don't know. I don't know. That is interesting. Why isn't there a real gate nine? I wonder. A gate nine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder if that was something maybe uh, Scott Breithop would have been able to answer. Or the All Things BMX uh, historian. Craig oh, Dragna. He Craig Dragna might know. I think he's in the chat already. All right, Craig, look that up if you don't know, brother. <laughs> Is he? I thought he was at Smashing Pumpkins. He's 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 oh. pulling double duty. He actually told me last night he he might be listening uh, while at the concert. I I can tell you the traffic going in there tonight on my way over here was crazy over at Pine Knob here in pumpkins? Detroit. Oh, dude, really? Yeah, hmm. they haven't toured in like a million years. There's a reason for that. <laughs> well, many people would argue with your reason, apparently. <laughs> Still Which is go. why they were in line to get into the concert, I'll and you're sitting the, right there. I'll go watch the Doobie Brothers for the 39th time for a $4 ticket I find at the mobile gas station. Right? Remember they used to do that? <laughs> Buy this energy drink, and we'll give you four free tickets to America and the Doobie Brothers. On the lawn. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Tonight's lightning round is brought to you by 110 Nutrition, and our show oh. doesn't happen without the support of our good friends at Answer BMX Die Job Apparel Bombshell Racing System. It's always those guys that help us out, you know. And let's—we uh, got a couple. We, we've uh, we've stepped into the arena of promoting events now, and uh, so we want to promote our upcoming event that we've got going on. Oh, no one. There. And uh, what? What are you stumbling over there, Paul? Well, I, I didn't know if we were going here or there. That's I just Chris. I'm, I'm just I'm guessing, killing dude. time until our guest gets on. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. All right, but. Hey. Uh, what I'd like to tell you guys about Here is we go. coming up on the September 30th <clears throat> out at Richfield Park. Uh, we're going to be out there, and we're going to be hosting the Whole Shot Challenge. And uh, this is going to be a fun one. It's uh, we we stole this idea. We're just not even going to lie about it. Like We stole this, this idea from, from Tyler uh, Brown and Sam Willoughby. Oh, the great... Cafe Willoughby uh, oh, Whole Shot yeah, Challenge. Eh? We've got DJ Damon. We've got lights. We've got fog machine, lasers. Uh, seven bucks to get in. We got tons of sponsors. Adding more and more sponsors. We're gonna yep. have um, payouts yep. for the for the podium. We've got. Look, if you don't if you don't hack it, you're going back to. You, you have to go down loser lane. Okay. If you, if you win and you make your way through the elimination rounds, you get to go up winners way. Winners way. Loser I like lane it. and winners way. Like we all got right. all kinds of stuff going on. It's gonna be so a guys, good time. You need to realize this is not a normal race. 
It's we are not race. racing. There's no, no. motos. Nope. It, it's going to be just a whole shot thing. And if you're not coming out there to have fun with this and stay home. just goof around and be silly, stay home. Stay home. Because the minute you start taking it serious, no. it ain't going to be fun. There could be some inflatable sumo suits showing up. All right. Just see, that, like that. Kind, so this is going to be fun. It, it's not that serious. I'd like to see one of those inflatable uh, Tronosaurus Rex. Somebody raced one of those. Oh, I know you the Halloween costume. Yeah. The, yeah. And we've got uh <laughs> we got cash for the winners. We've got a six pack of beer for the those that are old enough. And uh we've got like so for the younger classes, we got some energy drinks and then some uh some uh other other in for the younger, younger class we got another thing we're just keeping on the wraps for them. It's it's gonna okay. be fun. So it's gonna be all different ages. Yeah. Yep, there's four oh. classes. It's all broken up. We've got the oh. we put the event out before we started the show last week, so you guys go check it out. And yep. uh, we we're talking about some of the other events. The one we had last weekend, while everyone else was down in Louisville, we did the triple. We, yep, we did the triple track challenge, and uh, it was Check a good time. So right what there. we did was three tracks over the weekend, and uh, that was the award we gave away. So you put your finish on there. It was a really good time. We want to thank all the volunteers, all the tracks that helped with this, all the families, all the racers that came out. Um, it was a good so, time. Yeah, so this was in Michigan for folks that aren't, aren't aware. So um, We stole we had, the idea from Florida. Yep, we did this from the Bang & Bar series down in Florida. So mm -hmm. we had uh, Can-Am BMX over in the Port Huron area in Michigan on Friday night. Then we hit Waterford Oaks on Saturday. And then there was Richfield Park up in Davison, Michigan on Sunday. Yeah, it's a good time. And if you hit all three, you got this fancy number plate from uh, Gate 9 Plates. And then you got the little stickers to put your place for each one. It was a cool time. Oops. Yeah, and it just helped more people get to locals. Yeah. That's all yeah. it was. Good oh, deal. man. I think it's about that time, man. I think we... Hey, there he is. There he is. What's up? Not too much. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, sir. How's everything going? How was the traffic? Uh, you know, it, it's a stop and go. <laughs> <laughs> As always. All uh, right. right. Well, welcome to the show, Eddie. We appreciate you taking time and joining us this evening and getting home and dodging traffic. It's oh. We're looking forward to this evening, and along with many, many people already nice. piling into the chat. A lot of people. So, uh, Chris, okay. you want to take it away? Sure. So, Eddie, welcome to the show. Yeah. And we're going to start off here. Shoot, we're just going to do it. Hey, how did you get involved in the sport of BMX? Why did I get involved in the sport of BMX? You know, I, I rode skateboards for a little while, and it just took forever to get anywhere on the skateboard. And, you know, uh, the, the streets weren't exactly the smoothest. So as you, you know, skateboard, you know, one leg goes to sleep, and it takes forever to get anywhere. And my near my house, um, there was one tree that dropped these acorns. <laughs> notorious for stopping your wheels on your skateboard so um that uh, pretty much led me into riding my bike i, I didn't know what bmx was i just rode uh, a bike i had a swing stingray in the very beginning um and then i saw somebody you know take their their handlebars off and put box bars on kind of like motorcycle bars and then they took their banana seat off and they put a single seat on so I took my seat off and put a single seat on. And eventually, you know, I wanted a motorcycle. But, uh, you know, the closest I got was, you know, my, my bicycle. And then we started, you know, just building and making, you know, Evil Knievel was big at that time. So we started building jumps and seeing how many, how many things we could jump and how far we can jump. And, you know, it just escalated from there. Um you know, and then, then eventually, you know, this is years down the way, but eventually, you know, we wanted to ride, you know, the magazines and I would look at the magazines and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, this this guy, this Tinker Juarez guy got in this magazine and uh, it was down the street from my house. And I never even knew about this skate park, but they were letting bikes ride. Oh, I got to go. there. So pretty much it. And then spent the you know rest of my high school days riding that park. Okay, so so you never got into the racing, just just the uh, riding. You know what I did? You know I didn't I didn't want to race, mm -hmm. 
only because, you know, seven guys are going to try to knock me down, you know. But at the racetrack, they made these jumps that were so <laughs> perfect and so rad that, you know, oh, I, you know, in order to, you know, go ride these jumps, I had to go enter these races. And, you know, I didn't care if I got first, last, anything, as long as I could ride the track. So. Okay. All right. So that, that's cool. Yeah. So, so you just started hitting the skate parks and that. When, when did it start to escalate into competition and that type of thing? Mm, good question. So the, the magazine actually started out this, um, this competition. You know, when they started letting us ride the skateboard parks, um, I got a picture in the magazine. Um, Steve Bennett got a picture in the magazine. Jeff Watson got a picture in the magazine. Uh, you know, a bunch of other guys, you know, and then the comment was on, on, in the magazine, who's better Watson or Fiola, you know? So that started the, the competition. Um, and I think, you know, Bob Morales is one of the first ones that, you know, he made this, STFA Skate Park Association uh, competition, and uh, you know I entered and went on from there. Huh. Wow. Okay. So, so did, did that competition did that kind of like tour around different skate parks? So, say in California or? Yeah, well, and again, another really cool part about you know where I live and and. Uh, you know, people, people say, oh, you're lucky, you're this, you know, I go, I, I was lucky, I was lucky enough to live in California, I was lucky enough that, that there were seven BMX magazines, I was lucky that there were, you know, five or six skateboard parks uh, around me, and uh, all in Southern California, so the odds of me you know, possibly being in the magazine, if I rode a BMX bike and I went to a skate park and a BMX photographer went there, then uh, the cop, uh, there's an opportunity for me to, to get in the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So, yeah, I went from, from one skate park to another skate park and, and this and that. So, but it, it, it took time to, you know, get more and more people to, go, to jump on board. Okay. So about what, what year roughly was that? when you started riding the skate park competition when it first started out? Um, I'm going to say early 82, 83, something like that. Okay. Um, you know, here's another thing. Uh, it, you, you had a, a, a cover shot of me in Haro gear. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what's funny is I, you know, I was coming up, I was uh, building my way in and people were asking to do photo sessions with me. And so John Carr had called me up and said, Hey, I'm from BMX plus, uh, I'd like to do a photo session and this and that and at your local skate park. And I said, okay, cool, rad. Awesome. Uh, I'm there. Oh. What's funny is that within, within a 24 hour period, I get a phone call from Bob Haro. <laughs> Bob Haro called me and I like, I don't even know the guy. And he calls me and says, hey, we'd really like you to, to ride for Hara. Okay, I guess, you know. So <laughs> he, he sends me a full uniform, a helmet, gloves, pads, jersey, uh, pants. He gives me a bike. And uh, he says, make sure you use this on your next, your next photo session. Just so happens I'm having one. <laughs> it's very coincidental. So, yeah. so, somebody somebody yeah. bent Haro's ear, I assume, there. <laughs> Says, That's hey. free advertising for him. Sure. And I, you know, somebody's giving me a bike? Are you kidding me? Giving me gear? I, I would pay you to take all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? It, it, yeah. Anyhow, so I do the photo session. Everything turned out great. Um Within the next day or so, literally within the next day, uh, I get another phone call from, I think it's one of either Bob or Bob's assistant. And he says, hey, 
you know, we're going to need that bike back um, because, you know, we it's only one of a kind and it's the first one that we've made and we got to do more um, photos with it to do ads and this and that. But uh, we'll get it right back to you. <laughs> okay, that, uh, that's fine. Wait. At this point in time, I was riding um, a torker, so which was pretty close to being what the the Haro bike was. Because, oh, um, yeah, with the maybe, double double top tube and. Yes, yeah. So so anyhow, but I still had the gear. So now Bob Morales had uh, organized this large competition um, at State City, and uh, you know. I'm riding the torker, but I'm in. Oh, I'm I'm sponsored by Haro, so I wear all my gear. I go to this competition, um, and I, I win the competition. But you don't know where you're going to end up in the magazines or what's going to happen this, here and there. Um, and three months later, uh, the magazine comes out, and I'm on the cover. Mm. Now, yep. you can't buy cover. You can buy ads inside, but you Mm -hmm. can't buy cover. So um, he got a free cover out of the deal. And with all Haro gear and and the full sponsor and this and that, and, you know, to this, well, I can't say to this day, I still don't have that bike. But (laughs) still waiting on the bike. (laughs) Still waiting on that bike. But here's the thing is that so Bob had had sold the company years and years later. John Bulgin uh, was coming out with the retro um, bike that of that year. It was, uh, you know, the, I don't even remember what year it was, 84, 85 or something like that. But it was um, uh, identical to what it was back then. They didn't change the geometry. They didn't change anything. They had it made locally. They had it you know, chromed and, and polished, and it looked beautiful. Anyhow, they only made 300 of these. And uh, mm-hmm. I got a phone call from uh, Joe Hawk, who uh, is running uh, Faro at that point in time. And he said, hey, I'd like you to come out to this thing in Vegas while we're handing out these um, one-of-a-kind, uh, you know, what am I going to say? Limited edition uh, Haro bike. Sure, you're going to pay for the hotel and the flight and everything. I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> so, anyhow, we're we're in Vegas, and they start handing out these bikes to, to, to named riders, good riders, riders who have been riding for Haro for a long time. And uh, then all of a sudden, they're they're at the end of the list, and they they call me up, and they said, hey, you know, we haven't forgotten about you. Matter of fact, we you're pretty much the, the second rider, other than Bob Morales, but the second rider in line to get this bike in the magazine. So uh, so they handed me one, and uh, it had my name on it. It has my name on it. I still have it um, sitting in the Raptors in the box still, and, and uh, it's beautiful. It's, uh, I don't know. It's just there's the stickers, the chrome, the box, the everything about the bike looks great. But anyhow, I eventually got it back. But they had me tell this story in front of Bob <laughs> while he was. <laughs> uh, did, did uh, just real quick? Did, did that Haro? Does it have tough wheels or does it have uh, spoked wheels on it? Uh, so at the point in time of them giving us the bike, it was not a complete bike. It was just a frame oh, okay. and fork. Okay. So right. it was just it, it was just in a box. But okay. um, it, the, the display is beautiful. I don't know if you've ever seen one uh, or not, but no. it, it looks really good. No, no, but I do have the magazine with you on the cover, on on the torker in the Haro gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's a the, there's another picture in there where i'm really young and i'm actually doing that bit right there where that's that's the photo session i'm doing that that's the horror bike oh that is the so, one you're talking about okay cool all right so that photo <laughs> not that i i don't like it just 
not my favorite. No? <laughs> that's, well. that's me over at Huntington Beach. So, so, are still you... riding, still playing, still having fun. Yeah. So you had Haro, and then what was after that? Oh, so, you know, uh, BMX was growing. Uh, so many companies were coming in. Um, I actually got a sponsor through Jocks Jag. Oh, the you shoes. You can remember Renny Roker. Yes. Yeah, so Renny Roker uh, hired me and, and gave me a bike, and we went out and did shows, um, and we rode, you know, Jocks Jag BMX bikes and, and uh, it was pretty much a uh what do you want to say a, a mongoose but with jag logos okay do you have to wear the shoes too <laughs> unfortunately yes <laughs> and those that don't know the jocks and jags were shoes i think they were trying to take on the vans at the time for the number one bmx shoe and uh, they didn't exactly do all that hot at that uh, particular <laughs> challenge. <laughs> but Renny Roker, um, have you ever seen the BMX um, episode on chips? Where, you know, um, I guess, not Punch, but John has a BMX team. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. now Renny Roker is, is the reason for that. Um, yep. I have, I, Paul, I've, Paul sent it to, to me and, uh, he's typically the sound guy here at, at the show. He's, he's got a track he runs, but he <laughs> kept talking about this show, talking about it on some of our trips to the indoor. And I'm like, Paul, I, I, you forget there's like a 10 year gap. I miss chips. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. He went and dug it up and sent it and, you know, like it was pretty pretty cool so was, i have seen that episode that was I, I saw it originally back in the day but i haven't seen it since yeah back when the dirt bike kid was out <laughs> uh, you you were like right on the forefront watch the sport blow up and we're not going to skip along but um i don't want to skip ahead sorry i mean you've obviously seen the sport of the freestyle you know huge small huge you know grow like it's where it's at now um, in your time, like in those first five, six years, you're riding, um, and I mean, you're doing covers and things like that from the time you started to let's say like 86, 87, what was, what would you put your finger on as one of the biggest things that changed the sport in that window? Oh, you, um, the, the publicity, the, okay. you know, uh, ESPN, um, the internet starting, um, you know, j videos, mm -hmm. um, video games. Um, you know, when we first started, we didn't have any of that. We didn't have foam pits and we didn't have resi mats. And mm -hmm. We didn't have videos of somebody else doing it before us. We were the first. We didn't know what was possible. We didn't know what was not possible. We, you know, if we tried something, we died trying to do it. <laughs> you know, if we make it, we, you know, so it, it, the the progression is, you know, the safety gear, the um, the, the bikes that were made better that didn't break. You know, um, I, I can honestly say I, I didn't really break a whole lot of bikes. Um, one reason is that I was trying to be as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. um, other, uh, you know. I was trying to emulate Bob Haro, how smooth and flawless he was when he rode. Um, but the, the kids, you know, now, you know, they're going to, they can get points to, tr to even just try to make the trick mm -hmm. instead of making the trick. I mean, they'll, they'll get, you know, they'll actually win for doing a double backflip trying it, you know, mm -hmm. back in the day. But, uh. you know, now a double backflip is, uh, a must in your run. Right. 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 Mm. Yeah. So w when you started, y you were using race bikes for yes. doing the tricks. There were no freestyle specific bikes. 
No. So the only one that was specific is that was Bob Bob Harrow's bike. Um, the the Torker was, you know, mainly uh, a race bike. And uh, yeah, when when I got sponsored by GT, um, they didn't hand us a freestyle bike. They handed us a race bike. We had a Mach One. We had a Pro Series. We had, you know, their race bike. And mm-hmm. when they handed it to us, we didn't say. Oh well, the geometry of the head tube is way too steep, and it's too long, or the 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 top tube is you know not long enough. We rode what they gave us, right? And we work. Yeah, well, you know, like like me being a kid back then, you just had one bike, and if you <laughs> raced, that was the you know you were trying to do the tricks you saw in the magazine or whatever it be on the race bike, you know. So it, it, you know, there, that wasn't part of the deal until that came out, you know, it, it was in, it, from my side of it, it was interesting to see how the magazines went from all racing. And then all of a sudden you start seeing these guys doing these tricks and, you know, you know, you'd see Eddie in a, a skate park, you know, blasting up in the air, 10 feet above the top of the bowl or whatever. It was just says watching some of your your footage uh, uh, last night on on YouTube and <clears throat> something I, I feel needs to come back as fast as possible is and I, and I think it needs to be in the Olympics is number plates need to be back on the freestyle bikes. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's, you know, we, we tried, it didn't work. No. <laughs> and, and it was even about, you know, I on our side of the freestyle area, you know, we're trying to get as many sponsors as we can, you know, because that's what's paying the bill. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. RL being the number one guy of getting sponsors and his jersey being, you know, a mass collage of, of every sponsor you could possibly think of. Right. Um, well, without a number plate, now you can't, you can't put any sponsors on there. So RL had a number plate and ran it for a long time. Um, but in order to do certain tricks, you couldn't have a number plate on and this mm-hmm. and that. And there, there was a time where I actually put wheel discs. I made my own wheel discs so that I could put more sponsorships on, so I could make yep. more money. <laughs> and, you know, it, it it worked to a point until it got windy. Then it didn't work. Oh, those <laughs> those oh. big wheel covers, those big like you know, I think Eddie's were white, big white plastic that mounted inside the rim, and then you could put yes. you know like GT stickers or whatever all over it, right? Yes. That's yep. Awesome. Exactly. It. So so anyhow, you know, we tried to do you know number plates and disc covers and things like that, but you know, okay. it, it, it's all about you know the, the sponsorships and and being. You know, when I rode for GT, it was like uh, being a poster child and, and being recognized and, and um, being portrayed as, you know, straight and narrow and doing yep. doing what's right. And mm-hmm. We're not selling to kids. We're selling to a parent. Mm-hmm. And, and the parents are the one who's buying the bike. Um, going back to the BMX racing and then all of a sudden freestyle happens. I, I take it like like the new really craze, right? So, you know, it, with the BMX bike, you have to go to the BMX track. You have to go somewhere in order to race that bike. You have to go somewhere to, to, to race other people. Mm-hmm. Where freestyle, you can go out right in front of my house. I can go in the parking lot. I can go to the beach. I can go anywhere and do freestyle, just like the kids on the bikes that are doing really. Right. That's a, good compa- that's a great comparison. No, that, that's very true. Yeah. Especially the flatland stuff. I mean, you just need somewhere flat and have at it, right? Yeah. 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 So I know. You, you, he, Eddie had an influence when I started riding. Because, like, the, guys, the kids that got me in the racing, they, they were all doing the freestyle stuff. Mm-hmm. But I had one friend of mine who literally tried to copy your routine. <laughs> and, like, the from the moonwalk to the. I, I might be calling the, the, the names wrong, the frame surfer and this and that. And I can't tell you how many times I had to scoop Nick off the ground when he tried to do the handlebar hop. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's yeah. just. Uh, I've, I've, 
miss that and and you're, you're either over the bars or doing it the opposite way mm-hmm. where you're jumping backwards and your heel catch the crossbar and then your seat comes through your chest <sighs> Uh, you've, yeah. you've had such a huge impact and influence on the sport all the way around. And um, I just don't want to not ask this question, so it might be out of sequence here. But in, in your time, you're still doing it. Uh, like I, we talked yesterday, we've got a ton of questions that came in before the show, and the chat's filling up with a bunch of them right now, along with just stories uh, about yourself. But in you, yeah. what do you feel your greatest achievement's been in this in in the sport of bmx my greatest achievement you know a lot of people are going to say the movie rad but i think just riding in general just having fun and doing tours uh the tours for gt i think because gt did this world tour and we went around the world and i'm you know, people know who I am because I was there mm-hmm. and because of the magazine. You know, if you fast forward to today to a, uh, a YouTuber or a TikTok person or something like that, people might see them around the world, but they don't know who they are, mm-hmm. you know, unless they're really interested in them. Um, and they have a lot of, uh, you know, media that they can show. But I think I think my greatest achievement is, is just, you know, riding and, and having fun. I, I don't, you know, I'm just a kid that rode a bike that had fun doing it. I think I was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't go to jail. I didn't smoke pot. I didn't do drugs. And I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not, you know, so I don't, somebody once said to me, and they, they, and I was asking them about, you know, how come I, I don't have a, a documentary about me, you know, they go, well, your story doesn't sell. Oh, you, you didn't hit bottom. You didn't, you didn't bury somebody in the desert. You didn't, you know, <laughs> oh, hit anybody. You in, you're not doing drugs, you know. So it's like, so I did everything right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, my story doesn't sell. So anyhow, <laughs> on that, we're making. A- <laughs> it's perfect right yeah. well we'll just record this and we'll put it out <laughs> so <laughs> I'm you're kidding. Uh, i'm kidding you see the world tour part um what year was that uh i you know, I, i'd like to say i remember exactly what year it was uh it's 84 85 something like that okay all right uh, okay i just to think like a world tour that this you know, bike company decided we're going to do that and taking you guys around the globe with no internet. Um, we were still heavily dependent on the transatlantic, uh, copper line across the ocean for phone calls. Um, was there fax machines? Would there been fax machines? Uh, that would have been right on the no? edge of it. So yeah. Like, like, yeah. Just thinking of like how you guys all just jumped in and took off and did this world tour without all these, technologies there is wild uh do, is there a part on the tour that really sticks out you still remember to even to today um you, the technology that we had in california was probably six months in advance of everywhere else so when we traveled to japan you know they did they, they didn't have a gyro. They didn't have a pot mod. They didn't have certain things that we had on our bike mm-hmm. because we're this much behind us. Um, we had tricks that we were doing that we already had down pat and we we're trying new tricks where, you know, when we show up at a place like in Germany, you know, these, these people are still working on the, the, the our basic tricks that we were mm-hmm. doing. Um, the other part was when we went to uh, different countries and we sent them directions on how to build a quarter pipe, not everybody knows how to read directions and not everybody knows how to put quarter pipes together. So when we showed up in, in different countries mm-hmm. and we 
said, okay, we want an eight foot tall, just at vert and, um, you know, nice smooth transition. We got a 10 foot tall, two feet of vert and six feet wide, you know, so when you're like, some people got it right. Some people didn't, but, yeah. but because somebody was, you know, paying us to go ride these things. Mm-hmm. I, I was just happy to be there and, and we're going to ride something. And, and, you know, I just got lucky that someone paid me for something I'd love to do anyhow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, 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 that's the cool thing, right? Got paid for doing <laughs> something fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like getting paid to travel the world. It's not a bad gig. Yeah. Well, not a bad gig. And at a young age. Yeah. Yeah. That's true too. Yeah. I, I can say from my own, I, I don't know, it's not about me, but, you know, from what I would see in the magazine and then try to copy that and try mm-hmm. and figure out from a picture how they were doing something mm-hmm. was very difficult. You know, right. Because all mean, we all saw you... was magazines. Yeah. And, and you got to figure out, well, wait, how fast was he going? Yep. And did he take his hand or his foot off on the way up, or was that on the way down? <laughs> and then even a motor drive wouldn't give you the full speed of, of the and, and the technicality of how hard this trick is um, yeah. and how many times he crashed. You know, uh, I, John Carr, um, Bob Osborne, Wendy, um, and all, everyone that took photos, you know, it's not always the first photo that they take is going to make it in. And it's not always the, the first time we shoot it, we're going to make the trick. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of cutting room floor stuff that, that didn't make it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm when sure. you were talking about, you know, you're traveling and you're kind of ahead with the technology and that I mean, really at that time, it was just magazine print was what people were getting. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Correct. Yeah, because there wasn't, uh, was there any videos out like in 85, 86, 87? Cause I remember I got my hands on a copy of a Haro video that like a, I, I feel like anyone that was freestyling was in that video. <laughs> and uh, like Bob's sitting on a ramp talking about the enchanted ramp and like they're showing the van and uh, all this. And I mean, we almost burnt that, that tape up because it was like the only thing we had other than the magazine to, to right. look at for that. But can you recall any videos that were? I can't recall anybody having any videos okay. or seeing any videos. And yeah. uh, if you did have a video uh, camcorder or something, it was huge. Yeah, I was, was just, just going to say, yeah. Enormous, right. So, yeah. Um, and it was regular size tapes and yeah. you, you had to go through the, um, the search and, and the squiggly lines and trying mm-hmm. to fast forward and backtrack and all this stuff. But, um, for the most part, it was, you know, uh, photos and that was it. And most of the time, the photos that if we did photos, we, we didn't know, you know, the timing or the clarity and, mm-hmm. and the adjustments. And all we had was that little one ten camera that you're pushing the thing. And, <laughs> and then you take the, the film to photo nope. mat and see what you get. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I, I can tell you again from my thing, like I was saying earlier, you just had the magazine pictures. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anybody actually live ride, like do the tricks That's, that they, until rad. Well, the beginning of the movie rad. Yeah. That was the first time I saw actual moving tricks on bikes in, you know, Eddie and all the guys in the beginning of the movie. I was, I was just, my jaw, my mouth was wide open the first time I saw that. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is something else. And did you go to the theater to watch that? No, I didn't. Because I didn't know about it at the time. It, or I would have. at your rental place and, and you wore it out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I'd go I'd rent it and then, you know, it'd have to be back like in a day or two. Take it back. And I'd go in and go, hey, I want to rent it for another two days and pay them, you know, whatever it was, two or three bucks, and I'd take it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, I don't know if you know this or not, but so a DVD, or not a DVD, the VHS tape was never sold. It was never, 
never sold, was never made for, for uh, a home uh, purchase. So they were only for rental and rental only. So if uh. somebody had of the movie Rad back in the day before the pirating went on, uh, then they never returned it. And they paid the, you know, the, the, the hundred dollar fee of, of keeping the tape or the lost fee or whatever it was. Uh, but yeah, it yeah. was never it was never sold and, and until all the VHS home video rental places went mm-hmm. out of business, um, that's the only way you got them. Here was a, a, pro- a real I picked one up for twenty five cents. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> here was a pro tip to get it for no no fees. You just went to the local store, gave them a fake name you were renting it under as a kid. Oh. Because back then, it wasn't like they had elaborate computer systems. Like, <laughs> the local rental store in my town had, like, recipe cards that they would be like. <laughs> so I just, wait. I remember going in, my friends are like, yeah, rent the movie Rad. I just went in and said somebody's name, Sally Smith. And they're like, Psh. Like, see you later. Never returned it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you have those those original yeah. VHS rentals. Yeah, the, the covenant was getting your hands. Uh, and and I don't – these aren't like a chain, nationwide chain. We have these um, here in the state. Um, they sell like – cds and dvds now and 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 stuff like gamestop get like a gamestop right you buy it used and um god where where we we found it at this place called jelly beans and it's just resell right and it was a cassette of the soundtrack oh my god yeah oh yeah dude i have that straight burnt that tape up in my first or second car my friends were like, "Why do you Stuck listen?" On the send me in there. Oh, it was that and, like, there was, and I'm like, I don't really remember that song being in a movie. And you Why go does back, it keep skipping it. Oh, it was, it, yeah. <laughs> I, I bet that's still kicking around. I remember finding that one, and we were just because I go in to buy music for DJing, and all of a sudden, one day, I'm like, oh, "Wait, is that? <laughs> they even make this?" And I'm like, "What?" I had the other older BMXers offer a ton of money for that. Um, yeah, full of LP. D- well, it, I couldn't find the LP. I was able to find the cassette. I'm like, I, and there was a moment when they started making you could get things pressed on vinyl that I was like, uh, I don't know if I'd ever. It was only about 300 bucks. I could have had it pressed on vinyl, like a personal one. As those yeah. machines got a little more affordable, companies would start offering that. And I'm like, hmm. I don't know. Be kind, rewind. Oh gosh, yes. yeah, <laughs> right on. Hey, uh, Eddie, uh, we're gonna jump in here and uh, do our chat check in with Melissa. Um, so, if you uh, want to, uh, and you can add to anything that we're, you know, the shout outs we're giving and sharing some of these stories here, we're gonna toss it over to Melissa as she does our BMX Rocks chat check in. It's been extremely busy over there, Melissa. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we wanna welcome again everybody into the chat and onto the show and thank Eddie for being here with us tonight. Uh, Lots of fans in the chat, it looks like. We wanna say hi to Stephen Latchford. Uh, He's tuning in. Our buddies over at the Beer Budget BMX Live Show are also tuning in on Facebook. Mighty Moses Tillman is also tuning in, talking about that cruise that's coming up for all you lucky peeps in about two weeks. Uh, Happy birthday to our friend David D'Artona. We're hoping you're having a great day, and thanks for spending it with us. Um, Hi to Joe Rincon over on YouTube. We appreciate you being here. Uh, Show fan and friend Damon Tucson's also tuning in over on Facebook. Um... Mr. Craig Dragna is tuning in over on YouTube, probably trying to decide who sounds better, me or Smashing Pumpkins, but because you know, <laughs> I believe he's at that concert this evening. He is. But, <laughs> yeah. He's double duty, and um, he was so excited. I probably can't hear me over. Uh, oh, over, I'm sure it's loud. What's his name? Billy Corgan. Um, hi to Barry Nilsson. He's t- uh, tuning in. Who else am I missing? Uh, Clay Clay 118 is over on Twitch. Welcome. Hey. We appreciate you. Got a Twitch user. Uh, Corey Covington is tuning in. Says glad to see the local scene is growing. Oh, uh, <laughs> David, <laughs> David said, um, to your chat question, doesn't matter how many lanes, let's still pad those moto counts. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, Hubbard BMX Raceway over on YouTube. Says, hi, Eddie. There's a rumor you dated Wendy. Is this true? Uh, yes, 100%. <laughs> Back in the day. Nice. So, so you dated Wendy Osborne. Yes, I did. Okay. I, I'm just saying that to clarify for yeah. folks that don't know who Wendy is. All right. Osborne well, is. the rumor's true. You've heard it here. Uh, we want to say hi to Richard McAvney. Avony, maybe. Uh, he says, oh, my God, it must have been somewhere between 30 or 35 years ago. My girlfriend and I were at Magic Mountain standing in line to get a roller on a roller coaster. And standing in line in front of us, just in front of us, was Eddie Fiola. I asked my girlfriend to ask for his autograph, and he was so kind and generous and had no problem signing our Magic Mountain ticket. My question is, does he recall this moment? And uh, I hope to see him at Frogtown this weekend to sign that very same ticket. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I I do not remember that moment. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I've, I've met a lot of people in my day, and I have hit my head a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna blame it on on that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'll be at Frogtown, and I can't wait to find, I can't wait to see that. If he even has photos back in the day, that that love seeing those things. Yeah, that would be that would super be pretty cool. cool. Uh, all right, we're gonna say hi to Paul Spadowski. He says uh, hello to the freestyle legend. Um, Damon had a question. He would like to know who is your biggest competition when you, or who was your biggest competition when you were riding pool. Uh, I'm gonna say it was Mike Dominguez, uh, Brian Blyther. Um, you know, those two guys. Uh, were the, the, the skate park local um, back in that time when I was competing? That that those were the the guys to compete against. You know, Michael, Brian, um, Steve. Um, oh, there's another guy, McLeod. Um, RL really didn't enter any skate park competition. And as far as I know, excuse me, um, Bob Harrow never entered any competition. <laughs> so. hmm. That's interesting. I, I would have thought they would. So Richard McAvney also had asked, uh, who has more wins, you or Michael Dominguez? Ah, good question. Um, I think we're almost at, I think we were at a tie, mm -hmm. but because, the King of the Skate Parks uh, finale, um, and I, I won. I was the reigning King of the Skate Park holder. Mm -hmm. uh, we might have won equal amount, mm -hmm. but because I won the last one, I kept the trophy. You were the so. okay. <laughs> crowned the king, right? <laughs> well, you got another one-up win on him that's put you as the overall winner. Because you did the show tonight. You got another <laughs> win, and it puts you into the right. overall category. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you, you beat him here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to continue to say hi to Jim Bosco. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Stickers Kinky, Kinky says hi from Puerto Rico. Hello. Hi, we're glad you're hey, here. I think that's a new one for us, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, Nick Quinn says, what's up? Uh, Bill Sharp is also tuning in. Thanks, thanking us for the show. That's super cool. Uh, Ken Ballinger is over on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. We don't mind if you're late. Better, better late than never, right? <laughs> um, Todd Britton is also tuning in. He says that uh, hi to the King of Style. He loved the upside down number one on the back of the jersey. And... Yeah, so, you know, uh, people ask, you know, why I ran an upside down number one. And I, I always come back with, you know, if you went to a race car meet, there's a guy with a number one. If you went to a football team, there's a guy with a number one. You go to a basketball team and soccer team, there's always a guy with a number one. But how many people do you know with an upside down number one? <laughs> Just one, apparently. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey. Very smart marketing. I like it. it. it yes. Hey, it got somebody's attention, didn't that's it? That's right. That's right. 
Uh, hi to Sean Gifford from Die Job Apparel. He's tuning in. Giffy. Uh, Len Novak's also tuning in. He says he's looking forward to riding with you again at Menifee uh, uh, Bike Park, local to Las Vegas, I'm guessing. Out there. I'm sorry. We have a pump track oh. in Menifee. Men- not too far from my house. So. Okay, Menifee. Uh, I, I pretty much rode uh, all the way up until last week. Uh, and I had to stop because I, I had hip surgery uh, a week ago. Oh, my so goodness. I have a brain thinking new left hip. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, so the, you'll be off your bike for a little while then, huh? Uh, you know, a little bit. I, it's actually easier to ride my bike right now than it is walking. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it's weird on how the, the surgery happens. Is, you know, they, they, they have to cut that bone off and do all this stuff where um, the, the incision hurts, but the new hip is, is beautiful. Feels great. I just said yeah. uh, the surgery on my thumb to remove some arthritis, and I know that feeling. <laughs> I can take the surgery pain because it is nothing like that chronic, nagging, arthritic pain. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yep. I hear you. Uh, yeah. All right, a couple more shout-outs. We're going to say hi to Corey Lewis. Uh, they say that's what it's all about, having fun. BMX, however you do it, is effing fun. Um. Nick was reminding that they charged extra if you didn't rewind your tapes, <laughs> which is where I came up with the Be Kind Rewind. Yes. Uh, Todd Britton said that he saw Rad at the drive-in. Doesn't get more 80s than that. Oh. I would actually 100% agree with that. That, <laughs> cool. would, that would be cool, dude. Uh, I was going to the movie Rad. Yeah. I filmed it. You know, I'm, I'm living in, in Bellflower area. Uh, we, we filmed the movie Rad. It, we filmed it in 85 and it comes out in 86 and I tell all my friends, Hey, we got to go see this movie. I'm in it. There's going to be a ton of people there. I'm going to be, you know, a, a movie star and I'm, you know, doing all the stunts and here and there. And, and, uh, I show up at the, to the movie theater on, on the, you know, the, the day of, and it's me and my seven friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Empty. I mean, like it was, crickets and uh but we still saw the movie in full view and and seeing bmx on a big screen is yeah. unbelievable back in the yeah. day you know like you never saw it on video you never saw it on tv you never saw it anywhere and to be able to see it you know on a big screen like mm-hmm. that was just unbelievable but you know i i, I didn't get the the hooting and hollering when i showed up on on screen um <laughs> You know, because there's my friends, and they're all just laughing at me. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Too funny. So 35 years later, they did a one-day release mm-hmm. of the yep. re... Um, they, 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 they did some cleaning up of the movie, and so they, they, they did some... Yes, remastered, and yeah. they... They made the music better. They, instead of a, a stereo 2.0, 2. It was a five-point surround sound. And mm-hmm. they, did, they did the adjust, right? And they tried to fix as many um, color errors that they could possibly fix in the movie. Um, so anyhow, uh, it's coming out on one day. Um, and nowadays, you, you buy your ticket online. So I buy a ticket for myself, and I'm... I'm out of the, the, the town right at that point in time. Um, and I buy one for my wife and I said, okay, I'll meet you there. And uh, I hit traffic on the way home. And literally I show up right as they're announcing the guy from hell track <laughs> and they're going across the line. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh yeah. It is that when I walk in, you know, it's dark. Nobody knows I'm there. It's it's and it's jam packed. There's people on the stairwell. There's people in the alleyway. There's people eating popcorn on the side of the chair. There's so many people. I've never seen a movie theater that packed, uh, especially for Rad. Um, but anyhow, I sneak in and I already have my seat and I sit down 
and I hear him saying, you know, oh, hey, Beetle Rosecrans, kind of quiet. Oh, Martin Aprio, kind of quiet. Then they said my name, and I swear, I, nobody knows that I was there, but they went, everybody, hands up in the air, hooting, oh. hollering, this went, <laughs> Redemption. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. 35 that years so cool. late. That's right. That's how it goes. That is sweet. Um, all right. I'm going to round out here with Ryan. Hi to Ryan and Riley Baumgarter down in Florida. Uh, our buddy Matthew Boshens tuning in from Australia. Says, hi, guys. Finally getting a chance to watch the show again. Um, let's see. Oh, Nick's got a question, but I'm going to come back to it. Uh, Huck Karinsky says hello from Ohio. Trevor hi. Behan, uh, also hi from Toledo, Ohio. Good day racing. Uh, Brian Fell with Mega Design Group. He is over on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. He says he met Eddie at the Hall of Fame. Great guy. Um, oh, he's got a question too. Uh, Kurt Bliss says this guy in the day was amazing. Bona Marie also says hi to everyone. Great show. Um, on the bomb, bomb gardens right at the track. Okay, two questions. First one from Nick. Did you guys ever have beef with the skateboarders, aka the wood pushers, back in the day? So no, we we all got along. Um, I I literally grew up with uh, Tony Hawk and Tony Alva and uh, you know uh, all the all the big legend guys, um, Rodney Mullen. Um, we never had any problems in like they skated and we rode, we, you know, as, as the pros, I, we didn't have as many problems because I think we, we went really high in the air and it was a lot higher than any of the skateboarders would ever go mm -hmm. then. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> then. you know, I, I can't, I, I, again, I didn't have any problems with any of the guys at the skate parks and, and. We would just, you know, call out our turn, going after, 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 next, or whatever, and uh, we just had fun. So, uh, no, no, no problems with any wood pushers. <laughs> wood pushers. Call them. Oh, we, yeah. I always heard them called plywood pushers, <laughs> but I'm gonna, pushers. I'm gonna run with wood pusher from now on. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Too. I like wood pushers. A little more concise. <laughs> um, okay, Brian Fell is asking, what, uh, Eddie? What do, what do you think of Bill Allen milking it for so long? <laughs> for those of you that I mean, are, he's putting it right out there. Come on. For those of you that are listening on the podcast that aren't joining us live, Eddie just looked away. Just looked away. He's pleading uh, the fifth. And, and maybe we should really quick. Bill Allen is the uh, actor that played Crew Jones in the Hell in the Rad movie. Yep. Uh, I completely off the subject. <laughs> the subject. Okay. You remember Millie Vanilli? Yeah. Oh, the greatest yes. band that never yeah, sang. That never sang. That's right. <laughs> I was catching. I was catching where you were going with that. By the way, and the facial expression you cannot see at this moment explains it all. <laughs> it's well worth the replay of this on yes, YouTube, you guys. To YouTube. Uh, <laughs> that's on those, and that's all I got to say about that's that. That's right. Didn't have to say anything. <laughs> well, thanks everybody. Keep your questions coming. I'm following along, mm -hmm. and I'll get them out to Eddie as they as they come in. So. Yeah. All right. Keep oh, and going and Mr. There. Fell says, "Preach." <laughs> Preach. <laughs> we had. Um, the we had two, we had a couple question or a question here. I've got to a few of them already, but this was a guest submitted question that came through our page um, yesterday, I think, or maybe the day yeah. before. Um, and I, he sent this per, same person sent a quick story over and asked me if we'd share it. And he said, <clears throat> "This is uh, oh god, I'm gonna do a Chris. Do you want me birthday. to read it? What's yeah? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. This is more your wheelhouse. Uh, Actually, I didn't." The, the Hall of Fame thing or the other one? Well, the other I was going to do the story first and then the question. Okay. So the uh, guest says, uh, at OSR uh, 2021, Eddie coached a young man to meet Bob Haro. This person states that they are kind of old but is a Bob admirer. Eddie saw that this person was intimidated at approaching him, so he role-played with him to build his confidence. And that person was Joe Sickman. Uh and that who's uh, Joe wanted to share this story and just to state how kind and selfless you were and how much he appreciated that time. 
Huh. Um, so do I reply to something like this? Okay, so so Joe uh, is is a great writer, um, and um, he had asked me. When you meet people, there are certain mannerisms that, that some people have that, that stick out more than others. And when I first met Bob, I, you know, I put my hand out and he shook my hand. But he gripped my hand like there maybe it had to do with, with his writing or something or grabbing the brakes or doing. But he it was he was gripping over gripping. I mean, like, it's one of those death grip handshakes. Yeah. yeah. So um, Joe, one day at, at one of the, the, the OSDMXR things, um, had asked me about this. And if it was true, is Bob Haro an over gripper? <laughs> <laughs> And he wanted to be ready for it. That's and, adorable. Uh, so I explained to him this is, and I showed him how he grips, and I tried to uh, emulate exactly the way Bob would do it, and to be ready for when it happens when you put your hand out. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's the that's the story. And and uh. you know, Joe went over and, and shook his hand. So and I think they have it on video. <laughs> that's great. But he was much more prepared. Yeah. For this over gripping. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's all right. Took the intimidation right out of it. I love yeah. it. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad he shared that with us. You yeah. want me to ask yeah. the? Okay. Yeah. So Joe also uh, shared with us that you, Eddie, had bought a podcast at the BMX, BMX Hall of Fame induction of Kevin Jones, uh, and the rumor has it you negotiated a deal very well. Uh, he wants to know uh, how you planned for that deal. How? What, what was the question again? How I paid for it, or how, how you how, how you pl- how you planned how you planned for it? How it went down? I think is what he wants you to share with us. Ah, well, I had an idea, and the idea, you know, stuck. And Joe was, uh, you know, ready to take the money. Oh, so, you bought it was, from him. But, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of zeros, uh, went on with that. So. Oh. Okay. Now that makes a little right. more sense. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think he was trying to kind of ask things in the third person, but I didn't realize that they were really revolving around him and his relationship with you. So, okay. Okay. We got it. Okay. Are you doing anything with the podcast you bought? Uh, as of right now, um, I'm not doing anything right now. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're restructuring and, uh, we, we might, it might be up for sale. Okay. Cool. Uh, wait. For fun, these podcasts. People sell podcasts? Yeah, you just sit hey. down and you're happy we, asses. We wait a minute here. <laughs> Flip that triple track number plate around. We got a for sale sign up here now. <laughs> just kidding. We'll negotiate a hot deal. <laughs> the only zeros that are going to be negotiated in that is going to be in front of the dot. The, 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 the decimal. The decimal, yeah. It's going to be over. Be like, there's a lot of zeros Tens, in there. Tens, hundreds, Zero thousands. Zero. <laughs> um, it, Pe- pennies on the dollar. <laughs> Are we going a certain place here? Uh, no, we're good. Uh, okay. So I want to, yeah. I want to ask him about something. Yeah. If we can try to switch around a little bit. So you you were sponsored by GT. How how did that come about? Ah, uh, so um, prior to GT happening, I also rode. Uh, let's see, we I was at Jock Jag for a little while. And then after JAG, um, I went to uh, a company called Kurohara. Okay. Yep. And they, they were, Howie Cohen was the owner of Everything Bicycle. So prior to E.T. coming out in the movie theaters, they wanted to, you know, they already know that their, their bike is in the movie. And they wanted to promote the Kuohara brand uh, when ET came out. So I had gone to Japan 
for Kuhara and promoted the Kuhara brand for the movie E.T. So I wasn't in E.T., uh, but a lot of my friends were. And right. uh, we just got to, you know, travel the world. And the, and the really cool thing with uh, Kuhara and it being owned by Everything Bicycle, it was my first, you know, real, real sponsor that... Um, it was like a, a kid in a candy store. He, literally, we had a shopping cart, and we went through this warehouse that had parts, and they had everything. That's why it was called Everything Bicycles. They were the distributor for, you know, Redline and GT and all these other companies and this and that. And they, you know, supplied all the bike shops. And literally, he gave us a shopping cart and said, "Go to town." and we started filling stuff up and uh, at the end of the, you know, when we got to the end of the, the hallway and of all the bike parts, uh, he says, that's it. You guys are good. Well, yeah. And he says, okay. And like, he didn't write down what we took and we didn't, you know, take oh inventory gosh. of what we had. It was just stick it in your shopping cart and stick it in your car afterwards. Wow. When you, uh, so you, you were over in Japan promoting. What was the promoting and what did it entail for you to do on your part? Like, what did, what did you have to do as far as promoting? It pretty much just ride the bike and do what we were doing here in California. So they, they had ramps out there and they had skateboarders and they had BMX guys and they had BMX teams, but they weren't doing what we were doing. Okay. We were going higher. We were doing tricks that nobody's seen before. Um, we would, uh, place these ramps, uh, in malls and, uh, just ride and we have some music going. We would have a interpreter pretty much not interpret what we were, cause we didn't say anything. We just wrote, mm -hmm. but he was announcing the show in Japanese and explaining to a lot of the people what we were doing there. Uh, the crowd response was definitely different in Japan compared to when we did shows in the United States, you know, the kids, if we did something spectacular, they would, they would sit there with a smile on their face, but they wouldn't, you know, yay and crowd mm -hmm. and clap and you, nothing. It was just kind of a straight face. Um, so it was kind of oh. hard to, uh, get any reaction from the crowd. Okay. Eventually we did. And, and, and the, the promoter, uh, uh, tried to get the crowd to respond to what we were doing. So um, huh. it would, you know, it was hard, but we were just promoting, you know, the, the, the E.T. Kuhara bicycle along with um, the E.T. Uh, dolls and, and the mm -hmm. movie. Wow. I just think there's a, you know, they're like, hey, we got this bike. We're going to put everyone on tour, like, to sell the bike and the other merchandise is wild to think, you know, like that's, that's big money to do that. And, um, it sounds yeah. like you had some great times. Uh, yeah. it, so earlier we were talking, you were saying with the traveling, right. You had the crew back in California. Um, you would name some of them off. What was it like riding daily with this, with your, your, your crew you had? Cause we hear the names and it's like, Dude, was this like a video game every day of, you know, like one upsmanship? And obviously, you guys would, would push each other. But, you know, what was a normal day like with with these yeah, people that it, all went on? We'd show up at the park and, and uh, we get something to drink and, and we put on our knee pads and elbows and, you know, helmet and, and go ride for a couple hours. And, and Mike would be doing one thing and, and I go, oh, that's cool. Let me try that. And I would try that. And, and he would, you know, try to, you know, say, hey, you try it this way or do it that way. And, mm -hmm. and it would work vice versa. Um, but as the, the competition grew closer, then it would be like, I'm not showing them when Mike's there because I don't want to show them all my tricks. And then Mike would do the same thing. And, uh, huh. you know, if I showed up in the, you know, and he was there all day, he'd pretty much pack up and leave uh, so that I wouldn't see any of his routine. Um, and, you know, it worked both ways. Like I said, mm -hmm. if I 
saw that I've been there enough and Mike showed up or Brian showed up or any of the other guys that would show up, you know, I kind of, you know, just sit in the corner and, and not, not ride and kind of watch them and, you know, but we all got along. We all had fun. Mm -hmm. We all, you know, helped each other out. You know, if I got a flat, somebody else would be handing me a tube. Uh, and if somebody else needed cranks or a fork or mm -hmm. pedals or a grip, you know, we had spare parts. And I, and I can remember handing some stuff out to even just kids that were, mm -hmm. you know, needed something that day to ride. Um, oh, but that's cool. Matt, I think one of the guys actually rode my bike and wore Mike Dominguez's helmet in uh. one of the competitions. So. <laughs> <laughs> With, um, that's cool. In, in that eighties era, you know, eight, the 85, 86, 87, when we were talking, um, when you won a contest, what was the, like, what was the payout? Were there prizes you got with the payouts? What were, you know, and how much were the payouts? Um, I, I can't recall the exact pricing okay. and things like that. But, you know, back in the day, uh, when we were sponsored by GT, you know, GT would give us a bonus at the end of the year if we did really well, okay. um, GT would give us, you know, bonuses. If we got in the magazine more, um, because then that's advertisement for them and, and it's easier for them. Um, we would get a bonus after tour, um, that, you know, that we did a good job. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my, it's been out there, but one of the bonuses that I got and, and I, I done the world tour and I got for back from Japan I hit, this is 1985 and I had seen this, this TRX in Japan and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, what I didn't know is that Jackson racing, which is a huge Honda importer, um, was down the street from GT and they had just imported a, um, limited run TRX. It was a CR dash X and it was right hand drive and it was in road and track magazine and they did a bunch of stuff with it, um, in magazines and stuff like that. Anyhow, they were done. Um, uh, Jackson racing was done with the, the car. So they were putting it up for sale and I had just got back from Japan. And so when GT asked, you know, you know, what do you, what do you want for a bonus? And what do you think? I go, well, they got a car and you have money. And if you give me the car and you give them money, then I never had any money that I had to, you know, tax wise that I had. Ah, okay. There you go. So I got a car out of the deal and, uh, I still have that car. So really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's in a bunch of pieces right now and it's going through some retro you know, we're, we're working on a new engine and we're doing a paint job to it, but we're trying to make it as stock as possible again. But uh, it, uh, it's immaculate when it was together. It was beautiful. Um, I'll send you a picture later of what it is. Oh, that would um, be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, my, my new toy that I'm driving around now, now that I can't drive it um, because I have a left hip done, <laughs> Um, is a right hand drive 1997 Subaru Impreza WRX. Well, that car does two things shits and gets. <laughs> it, it's unbelievable dual overhead cam, turbo, 300 horsepower. This thing is just uh, unbelievable. And uh, we had a friend who imported it, was about to sell it. Um, and I, I, Pretty much said you're not selling this one. This one's mine. So we uh, we confiscated it, and, and uh, I have it now. So, but I can't drive it because it's a stick. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the hip, yeah. You got yeah. <laughs> Well, when, once you get all the rehab done and therapy and that, then you'll be back on the road. Eh? Oh, yeah, believe me, I, that that'll be part of my therapy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, I want to so, do a transition kind of away from the BMX for a second. And Chris, if you got something, we'll circle back. But um, yeah, I, do. I, 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 okay, then go ahead, ask that. because I, I think we can cover it fairly quickly. Go ahead. All right. So when you were with GT, they came out with the Pro Performer bike. 
yeah. how much were you involved with that? So knowing that we started off on race bikes and we wanted to, we wanted more freestyle aspect of it. Uh, Bob Morales and myself um, went to Gary and I went to Gary because I needed to, I wanted to do cross ups and my, my MX 1000 brake caliper wouldn't go underneath a race bike frame because of the angle of the bottom tube. It wouldn't pass through. And I noticed that on a red line, their bottom tube went up higher and they had a, uh, a gusset that the brake would flow past. So I had suggested how about a, a bend on the top or the bottom of the, the, bo- the bottom tube. And Gary said, that's not going to work. It's going to break. It's going to bend. But, you know, I'll make it. And you, you know, we'll see what happens. And uh, he made it, and it worked. The part of the double platform section, right where the seat is, is Bob Morales. Bob Morales was used to a torker and the Haro, and um, he wanted just to stand there where the seat mast was, um, but didn't need a double top tube all the way up. So GT Gary Turner made an uh, in uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Invented this this top platform area, mm-hmm. and uh, so Bob Morales and myself were both involved in the pro performer, and uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it, we were able to do cross ups, um, spin the bars around, do all the stuff, and then somebody came out with this pot mod. You know which you didn't need that bend anymore, but the bend helped in where if you were putting your foot into a certain spot and and had more area. And so, yeah, Paul Morales and I both had a lot to do with the pro performer. Okay. It sounds like you were responsible for the bend in the frame. Yes, 100%. Now the new frame, the, the, uh, the S frame, was designed by Martin Aparillo because he did more flat land mm-hmm. and he needs more space in between the seat mass and the bottom bracket. So they did another bend on the very bottom. So Martin is, is responsible for that second bend. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Sense. See, that's interesting. Yeah. That, that's why I asked that. But yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe later we want to go into the newer stuff. Well, we're probably going to do part two. We're going to have to. <laughs> I wanted to ask. I, I don't know what, what the freestyle guys call it, but in racing, we call it Moto 2. So we have to go yeah, around again. We're going to definitely welcome back because uh, it's we've got so much more to talk well, about. Yeah, because we have to talk about the former pro. Uh, the, the, we got that, the pot <laughs> system, and all kinds of stuff that could go on. Um, what I wanted to ask you about was the your transition into Hollywood – um and in your stunt work um like what led to that yeah so um doing the bmx when bmx was big yeah and all the companies um foot locker del monte mountain dew coke levi's all these companies wanted to have some type of bmx in it okay. and you know they they would call the magazine and the magazines would actually be our agents. And the agents, oh. well, they would call us and said, hey, they're having an audition in Hollywood to do these commercials. Okay. So, you know, the magazine, the, the, the product company would call the magazines to find out who the best writers were. And so the magazines would give them our names and then we'd show up for the audition. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, like I, I did a lot of commercials, right? all the ones I just mentioned, and, and then some. Um, and then getting into the movies, I was, I got pigeonholed into, you know, everybody knew that I rode a bike. So if it was a bike stunt, they would hire me to do the bike stunt. Um, but they wouldn't hire me to, to get hit or beat up or hit by a car. Mm-hmm. or thrown off a building or anything like that. 
but uh, I met the right people and I got to know the backside of the stunt industry um, and worked my way into there. Uh, I started learning how to do rigging, stunt rigging, and all the knots and all the, you know, the air rams and um, ratchets and high falls and, and things like that. Where, and, you know, I, I took a couple classes driving cars and started riding motorcycles. And I, I broadened my uh, abilities to be uh, hired so that I could do more and more stunts. But I've been shot and beat up and thrown off buildings and hit by cars. And, you know, I've done pretty much everything except for set on fire. All right. Uh, right. You know, fire and my skin, not a good combo. No. <laughs> what's, uh, no. What's, what would you say was that one stunt you did that you're like, that one was. How'd I survive that? Yeah. How'd, <laughs> yeah, how'd you survive? Oh. Okay, so, um, Dusk Till Dawn Part 2, <laughs> Texas Blood Hunt. They had me, uh, I was a Mexican federale, I'm on top of the roof, and a vampire grabs me and throws me off the roof. As I get thrown off the roof, I land on these power lines, and these power lines stretch down and spark and flames and stuff like that, bounce back up, and then I fly over to a car, and I land on the roof of the car, and I implode the roof of the car. I am 15 feet above this car with a quick release, and uh, the only thing keeping me from hitting the car is this quick release that somebody else has a button, and... Uh, it was a three, two, one action, and they hit the button, and I tensed up and was waiting for it, and it didn't go off. Oh. And I, and I clicked, and it didn't go off. Mm -hmm. So I relaxed, and it went off, and I hit the, hit the car like a sack of potatoes, but not, I, I don't know how I survived it, but it didn't hurt. Everything went like, you know, when somebody who is drunk gets hit in a car, yeah. they're the ones that don't get hurt right. because they're loose and less expecting. Well, because I loosened up and wasn't ready for it, I think I hit the car with less things. Anyhow, it, it's uh, Dust Throw Dawn Part 2. Um, I get thrown off a building, telephone telephone wires or uh, electrical wires, and then onto a car. So um, That's crazy. There it is. <laughs> But the, the, the funny thing is that during these stunts, they, you know, every time you do a stunt, normally there's a stunt adjustment. So you, you show up on set and you're getting paid your normal rates. Let's say, let's just say it's 500 bucks to show up for the day. But you have to get hit by a car, so they're going to give you an extra $200 or an extra $500 to get hit by the car. Now, if you've got to get hit by the car again, then it's an extra five hundred dollars on top of what you're already getting paid which was great <laughs> so when i did the the wire gag they had a camera underneath and they had me flying down and landing on the wires and then bouncing off the wires to infinity they kept me on the wires they just got me out of the shot then the next Scene is me flying and landing on top of the car and that's literally me on top of the uh, on this crane with a quick release 15 feet and they let it go and I just land flat back onto this car everything said and done the stunt coordinator comes to me and says hey I'm going to give you $3,000 for landing on the car. And I'm going to give you $5,000 for landing on the wire. And I go, well, the wire did hurt. Why are you giving me more to land on these wires? He explained to me that 
it's the danger factor that when I'm above the car, if something wrong goes, if something wrong happens, I land on the car. I'm supposed to land on the car. I'm not supposed to do anything. I'm supposed to land on the car. Mm -hmm. If something goes wrong, I'm landing on the car. On the wire gag, if something goes wrong, I die. Oh, my oh. God. I was wondering if you were going there. What the? <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Wire thing is just, you know, if the wire breaks, if something goes wrong, if something doesn't hang on right. Yeah. I end up with a camera from 40 feet in the air. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. So, so that, that's my, my stunt part. But I, I found out that, you know, I was getting paid to ride my bike. And I found out I could get paid more to fall off of it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right. Fair. Yeah. Very fair. So, okay. so what, what would be like your most famous stunt? Like, I don't know what, I don't even know. It's going to be, it's, uh, you know, where they see my face or that I'm in it or mm -hmm. they see that, that it, you know, it's a no brainer that that's me. Um, you know, the movie rad, um, the movie clock stoppers. There's a, uh, if you ever watch the movie clock stoppers, you can, him, if you know my style and you know how I ride, you're going to say, that's Eddie, without a doubt. Um, there's been commercials. There's a 501 Levi's commercial, a Foot Locker commercial. Um, there's, you know, a bunch of uh, 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 the, the Mountain Dew commercial where um, the, the, the guy is riding the bike and he's chasing the cheetah and he jumps off the bike and he lands on the cheetah and he pulls the Mountain Dew out of the cheetah. And he's the oh, yeah. bad cheetah. Yeah, so that was all me riding and jumping onto the cheetah and uh yeah the great all great commercials and, and movies that i work on you know so mm -hmm. big and and good amount of money i mean so yeah. the commercials you know they pay residual and uh they, you know every time they show it then you get more money and depending on if it's a regional or it's a nationwide or a national where it goes across the country where other countries actually get to see it, then you get paid even more. So, oh. and if they, if they put it into a, um, like I did a commercial where they, they put it, uh, in Argentina during the, um, the soccer final and, uh, they redubbed it in Spanish. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the, uh, you know, that paid extra. So, and I got to work with, um, uh, Beckham. Uh, so. Oh, really? It was Very cool. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Huh. That's interesting. We got so much more to cover, but I want to make sure we get to our lightning round and trivia this evening, Eddie, and, uh, we'd love to have you back on, but, uh, the lightning round is always a fun time, but we're going to jump over and, uh, do our trivia question. Um, don't answer it. Because the question actually pertains partly to yourself or your story, and um, <clears throat> that uh, Melissa's going to ask us here in a second. So, you uh, good to go, Melissa? Yeah. All right. And I just lost my trivia button. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Yeah, you don't want oh. me to hum it. No. <laughs> Oh, there it is. There we go. Melissa's trivia question brought to you by Bombshell Racing Systems. How's that? And they're stepping up and sponsoring the whole shot race, too. They got some pretty awesome oh, awards, right. too. Got a good one, Melissa? I never know. No? I, I, I never know. I don't, I, I don't pretend. I think it is. I don't know. Yeah, I we'll think see. there's some people listening that are going to nail it, though. Probably. All right. Uh, well, I, I'm going to guess this might be our very last pack of Danger Snacks, but there is a pack oh. in, in this sticker pack here uh, with I'm all of our other sponsors. Them out of there, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiding it. I got a nice, lovely ghetto wear visor here to the winner, along with uh, trivia sponsor Bombshell Racing T-shirt going out to the winner. Um, all right, so the question is, what year was the American Freestyle Association founded by Bob Morales? All righty. What year um, was the American Freestyle Association founded by Bob Morales? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> All right. It is time for lightning round. I'm excited. Are you, Chris? Yes. All right. This will be fun. These are rapid fire questions, Eddie. Don't think, just answer. All right. Uh, and the lightning round is brought to you by 110 Nutrition. They're, uh, they're getting ready to kick off that Florida State series. Uh, they were up at Louisville, man. If, when you guys see them, go over there and say hi. Check out the products. Tell and, them we sent you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, they got the new greens out. So, uh, and Got to get some of that, man. Yeah, Try that they're out. On, they're on order. I can tell you that all the other stuff, so good. Pina colada. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They're mixing it with rum. All I, right, Chris, no, start us off. With the, <laughs> the fruit one with the pe- Tropical candy. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> that. Whatever that concoction was melissa had a few weeks ago back at the racetrack it was really good uh all right so here we go eddie last movie you watched you liked it so well you watched it twice never top gun all right uh all right eddie what is your favorite sport other than bmx motocross what is one place you'd like to travel to that you haven't been Uh, hard to say. I haven't been. I've been to a lot of places. Um, I, I don't have. I've been everywhere. <laughs> I, I can't say that I want to go to Russia because I I don't. And <laughs> so it's not like, um, what about so, a return uh, visit? Yeah, return yeah, visit. A return visit Australia all day long. Okay, there you go. All right. Uh, what's the last thing you Googled? 1997 Subaru Impreza WRS <laughs> Inject. Oh my okay. goodness, that's specific. Uh, all right, Eddie, what's your favorite thing to do on a date with your significant other? Uh, you know, going to the movies, um, hanging out, uh, driving the car, driving, you know, in, in the canyon area. Mm-hmm. Nice. nice. Um, is your bed made right now? No. Okay. <laughs> and now your wife's going to be upset with you. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Proof right there. <laughs> I am living down, I'm living downstairs because I, I don't want to do the stairs upstairs. So oh, we made yeah. another bed downstairs just so I can not have to do stairs. Yeah, that ah, makes good go. sense. All yeah. right. All right. Uh, do you believe in the supernatural, like ghosts and that type of thing? Uh, I believe in karma. Ooh, okay. Good answer. So, Me too. If like that's going to happen, it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, all right. If you could transform into an animal, which one would it be? Jaguar. Okay. All right. Talking bike frames right here. Aluminum, carbon, or chromoly? I like chromoly, but my new bike will be aluminum. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. We'll have to find out about that maybe later. Um, if you could go back and give your 18-year-old self one piece of advice, what would it be? Mess up. <laughs> okay, I like that. Mine would be Microsoft. <laughs> By Microsoft stock. Yeah. Um, okay, Eddie, what's your favorite guilty pleasure? Ice cream. Nice. Okay. If you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? D'Artagnan. <laughs> I like that. All right. right. What is your favorite genre of music to listen to? 80s. 80s. I would have guessed that. Uh, What's your favorite type of cookie? Uh, White macadamia nut chocolate. Mm. (laughs) Uh, Would your 12-year-old self think that you're cool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. Okay. You're going to have to think about this one for a second. You're driving through a parking lot. You pull down one of the lanes 
and there's parking spots on the left and the right wide open. Which one do you take? Uh, the one to the left. All right. Pulls in left. Okay. That that seems to be the most popular yeah. answer. Yeah. I don't think anybody said right yet. No. Nope. You know, not. since we started asking this question, how much I, I've realized now oh, how much I left turn to park. I do the same <laughs> it's, thing. It's I, we, we, like, I'll just Google random questions for this segment, and this one hit, and I was like, unless no. I'm driving Melissa's truck where I'll back up, I was, it's the same way. No, this one's from Mike Miller. Yeah, that's right. This that, one came that from one's him. From Mike, right. But the other one. Still. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, Eddie, what is your favorite celebrated holiday? Uh, favorite celebrated holiday? Uh, Halloween. Okay. All right. Coming up. Yeah. yeah. Pretty soon. All right, last question. It's a tough one. Your favorite Wednesday night live streaming. It's also a podcast show. In the realm of all things BMX, what is it? (laughs) All things BMX. Yes, Yes. it is. (laughs) Thank you for playing along. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. (laughs) And uh, all right, uh, Chris, you want to let them know who's going to be on next week? Next week. We are going to have Mr. Toby Henderson, also known as the Coca-Cola Cowboy. Mm-hmm. He is the owner of Box Racing, Race Incorporated, the American BMX company. He also has Botima F- uh, Forks, I believe, Cook Brothers, on and on and on. We will be <laughs> joined by him next week. We'll get his whole story and where all these companies came from and what's going on with them. Yeah, so a burner there. Next Wednesday. You're going to see him out at uh, Frogtown, Eddie? Yes. Oh, yes. We, we actually have a meeting together. Um, Toby also owns and bought the right to uh, bicycle motocross action. So um, in this new company and him owning it, um, he wants to, you know, people who, who buy product from him mm-hmm. under the bicycle motocross action name, that money is going to be, uh, you know, put to uh, possibly scholarships or helping somebody get a bike that needs a bike or, you know, just going to help out people, getting people on bikes. Um, and uh, he had created a, uh, a round table of pros and, um, you know, intelligent people that, that know what's going on in, in the, the realm of BMX to you know ask questions to and, and i'm part of this round table um and uh it, we're having it in in frog town this year so we'll make awesome. a sounds really cool we'll make a note yeah. and we can follow up and find out what came out of the round table meeting yeah melissa you get a winner don't don't have a all winner. right eddie do you remember uh, what year it was i don't remember it I don't remember what I had one. <laughs> Look, I barely remember what day of the week it is. The, the way I remember is Wednesday, we got to do a show. Well, <laughs> as far as I could pull around from Google, it appears to be maybe in 84. Yep. I'm going to I'm going to concur. Yeah. Yeah. So somewhere between 82 and 84. That sounds <laughs> about right. The second you said it, Melissa, I see Todd that. chimed yeah. in. I, I mean, right there. That's great. Um, too late. That's it was, good. It was a long Google. <laughs> uh hey before we sign off eddie uh i want to toss it over to you for uh any shout outs any thanks and uh chris and i'll take us out but don't sign off um just hang out hang, um, hang out for a minute yeah because yeah, we want to talk to you about coming back on but uh yeah i'm gonna throw it over to you and um you know any thanks any shout outs yeah just like you know thank my wife for letting me do these things and and my kid um, uh, like to thank, you know, uh, Mindy Fruman and Kid Fruman for doing all they do for, uh, Rad Designs 1986, uh, everything that they do, um, and, uh, Supercross, Ryan over at Supercross, he is amazing, uh, he's building the new bikes, and, and just like to thank him, because, you know, anytime I have a question or, uh, an answer to something or a design thing he's able to answer it so all those people 
just uh, you know, thank you for doing what you're doing, and you're, you're not unthanked. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, Chris, go ahead. No, I was, I was say, actually, yeah, speaking of Bill Ryan, I know you did a little uh, YouTube video with him, gosh, what, a few weeks ago. So go go uh, YouTube search uh, Supercross uh, Eddie Fiola interview. It's actually, a pretty good one. I, I watched that the other, two days ago. It's yeah. a good video. It is. <clears throat> you know Eddie's got beer? What's that? He's got beer. He has beer. No. I did see that. Yeah. Huh? At uh, pipeline logger, yes. What Say, it, what uh, one it? more time. The pipeline logger. It's the king of the skate park pipeline logger, made by uh, uh, not brain fart. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens when you get old. <laughs> you get a, a brewing company. Cool. Uh, all right, so go go check that out. Pipeline beer. Yeah. Right. I assume that has something to do with the Pipeline Skate Park. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. All right. So, yeah, so hang out with us for a minute, Eddie. Hey, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that fun stuff because we, you know, well, you're, you're take, you know, flipping through there with your thumbs. Just hit the little like button. It takes two seconds, not even. It helps us out tremendously. We need that. We need to get the sport hitting that youtube google algorithm so when kids search bicycles it comes up at bmx not mountain bikes or whatever else is out there for biking but uh that's my little tidbit for this week i guess there's your chris beer rant of the night yeah so hey get out there and uh ride your bike this week and god bless you all have a great night i'm gonna hand it over to justin all right from all of us here at the all things bmx show thank you eddie for being on here and uh mindy and kid for helping me get in contact with you appreciate that you guys uh thanks everyone that tuned in this evening we really really appreciate it you guys uh yeah you can find the podcast version if you are late tonight you can find the podcast version on all your favorite podcast sites also the show will be up on youtube and facebook if you want to go back and watch the videos again and we'll have the post up here probably in an hour and a half uh where you can find all of that uh once again you guys have a great evening and as always you guys god bless